Hello, welcome to Saul. Saul. It's welcome funny. to Saul, really? Welcome to Saul. <laughs> That's the only thing. Funny thing is, only t if you can believe it, two people actually requested on the Walking Dead Whoa. videos. They're like, where are the Saul reviews? Whoa, we got two fans. Shout out to Holy those crap. two people. We love people you. People were wondering where Saul was. And I know some person, one person's like, well, it's just really boring lawyer talk, so I don't watch it. I'm like, hey. Show some respect. It's in the well, same it's universe. It's an intellectual show. Sorry, you can't keep up. It's in the same universe as Breaking Bad as well, so it gives you insight into some uh, details about that world. Plus, you got Mike. You got Mike's side story, which is different. So Mike if you don't like if you don't like lawyer stuff, then watch Mike in the episodes. But anyway, uh, we haven't been doing the reviews just because time constraints. One and you know, not much has really. I mean, I think for season one, we were more interested by the concept of the show so we kind of just reviewed the episode every week but now that it's in its second season well it just ended its second season i think we're more like all right let's kind of just you know view it and i don't know I, I think there was a break there was a year break for this show and i think we kind of forgot a lot of stuff so we kind of need to get back on our feet i actually did record a, a review for episode one and but got lost. yeah my recording software messed up so i have no it idea what that is nowhere in nether realm it's in Nether Realm, yes. What? What? But we're this video is basically not just a wrap up of the finale that happened the other night, but it's also like a season two overview thoughts about the entire season, and maybe how this compares to season one and predictions for season three since they're had you know, you know there is a there is a cliffhanger. AMC loves their cliffhangers. They really do, right? You Thankfully, know? this wasn't the. It's awful as the walking yeah, dead yeah it wasn't as bad as the walking dead but it was still like a oh what's gonna happen kind of thing so oh, you know boy. there's a there's a lingering plot detail kind of just out there in the blue so so we got jack and pete the same people i did that saw reviews with last year of course. and now haven't killed us yet i don't know even know <laughs> if, i don't even know what the name of this episode is what the finale episode because i know they have names oh uh called. click it was called click Yes, because Click. that must have meant that Chuck was clicking Click. on his recording software. Yo, I totally called that shit. Yeah, oh, so you did. I guess the theme of this season is after season one, there was a lot of uh, hard feelings between the two brothers, Chuck and Jimmy. Jimmy kind of went his own separate way. For a period of time, he really didn't want to do anything lawyer. And then I feel like this season was like him and it was basically him and Kim basically playing off of each other and what they wanted in their professions yeah. and how either the weaknesses or strengths of each other helped them either get to that goal or get a little, you know, far from that goal. And surprisingly enough, for a while, he was pretending to be a person he wasn't because he was working at an actual law firm doing exactly what he didn't want to do. And it ended up making him miserable. Inevitably. Go to the desk, though. Gotta acknowledge that. Coco Bolo that desk. desk. He did his Coco Bolo desk, which the amazing thing is, that episode I googled Coco Bolo desk just to see what the hell it is, and on the wiki page, the first thing it said was desk that was wanted by Saul Goodman, lawyer, in, in the show. I'm like, oh god, the, the internet's already on this shit. Yeah, the internet's too fast for us. Yeah. But, um, you I know. do think though that um, that was like around about the early parts of the series, and I think it was episode one had that really good scene with um, uh, Saul or Jimmy, whatever you want to call him, because he's been Jimmy this entire time, so he hasn't turned into Saul Goodman yet. yet. But um, he, him, and Kim are basically like hustling these really rich people and buying them drinks and getting them loaded, my you know, with all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, and then eventually they're like, oh, you know, we're trying to start this, and obviously they're using fake names. And oh, we're trying to start something here, and they just write them a check, and then that's basically it. So I think that's a really good representation of like how the two of them connect and how they bonded. Because yeah. whenever you first met Kim, you're thinking, "Oh, great, it's just another typical lawyer person." But then I think almost Jimmy's like, like Jimmy's kind of she's she's getting kind of shades of Jimmy now within her, and she's now becoming a bit more, you know, a bit a bit more. Yeah, we uh, should we say risque? Like risque. Dirty? We, yeah, we saw yeah risque in terms of stuff. Because later on in the season, like a while after that, she actually called Jimmy back, and she's like, "Oh, I'm at a bar," and I forget, you know, what she said, but I ha she's like, "I have one on the hook," and like he dr he was in the middle of like talking to that annoying assistant at the law firm, and he just drops everything and runs over there. 
Yeah, I think that Lucy, woman, yeah, that they, fat, pretty, bulbous woman oh, at, yeah. at Davis and Maine. Oh, she, she was, was so annoying. She was such a frustrating little bitch. Like she, you know, after Jimmy, after Jimmy stepped out of line like a little bit at Davis and Maine, like she was like always the commercial. Like they had a shitty commercial. He, you know, uses his creativity to make one that's you know outside the realms of law, and then you know, then the whole thing gets thrown into fucking orbit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think if we if we were to look at the entire season, like from the first episode to the last episode, I think it can go a little something like this. After season one, Jimmy was essentially like, all right, I, I, I did some more hustling with my, my childhood friend or my friend from back home and he died. So in his memory and a culmination of a lot of stuff like Chuck betraying him pretty much and telling him his true feelings, he essentially is came to the conclusion that he doesn't really, he still wants to be a lawyer, but he doesn't really want to work in, as like a big company, as like a big wig. And so he only takes the, uh, the Hamlin job for Kim, basically, just to make her happy. But then after a while, like he, I think he wanted to do his own thing, and that's why he made the commercial. And that wasn't what the early episodes were about. It was about his commercial and the consequences that it had, because he got screwed out of it, but not too bad. Kim was screwed out of it big time, and she was like demoted to like mailing duty or whatever the heck she was doing. Yeah, and then I think at that point, that was, yeah, I think at that point, that was when Jimmy realized, okay... I, I don't have the freedoms I want to do my own thing here, so I'm going to start my own law company. He asked uh, Kim, there's an entire episode I think was dedicated to him and Kim, like deciding whether they should like collaborate together, and Kim eventually says, let's not like work together, but let's work in the same building. That happens, and Jimmy does his own stuff, still doing his elderly things, and then it kind of goes into the whole uh, Kim stuff with uh, oh, Misa Verde, is that what it's called? Yeah, the case that she was trying to win, because uh, that was going on with her side. I, I do like the fact that they gave a lot more. Uh, Kim was a bit was a much bigger part of this series. I like that quite a bit because in the season one she was just kind of like the love interest, kind of. She was like Jimmy's companion, I guess. But in this episode, she really did become like her own character, and I really do like that because I didn't like Kim in series one, and I do like that they. Yeah. And the, a lot know, more love interest too. More. There's a lot more flirting between them, especially. Oh, so again, they have sex in the first episode <laughs> of the series. Talk about love! Holy crap! Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you know, I think Jimmy's smooth, smoother than his brother, or I know, Slip and Jimmy. Dolphin smooth. He is dolphin yeah. smooth approved. So then, yeah. So Kim loses the Misa Verde case to Chuck because Chuck's a great sportsman, well, I think obviously. What we should talk then, about first is that. Kim gets Mesa Verde for Hamlin, Hamlin McGill, while she's still working for Hamlin, and it's an effort for her to get out of the shitty position she's in at Hamlin, Hamlin McGill, or, or um, yeah, and basically, uh, um, Hamlin doesn't want any, uh, or Howard doesn't want any, he doesn't want any part of it. He's just like, oh, you screwed up, like, there's nothing she can do to bring herself back to the status that she was, and he was just treating her like shit, so... I think that's what eventually drew... And even Jimmy was kind of like the devil in her ear saying, you know, oh, just quit. They don't treat you with respect. You got that company for them. So that was how the whole Mesa Verde thing was put on the board. You know, they... they Because the thing is, it's a weird it's a weird thing because she got them for the, for the law firm. And then when she split, she tried to convince them why she was the one because she got them on in the first place. And then Chuck stole them because of his, you know, lawyer skills. And yeah, and also because he knew that she was associated with Jimmy and she was doing it just for Jimmy and to jumpstart her business. Mm -hmm. And Chuck, who obviously, especially in the later episodes, find out you, you get a lot more backstory into Chuck and Jimmy's relationship, whether it was there was a dinner flashback with uh, Chuck and his wife. He was married at a time. Holy crap. Uh, there was obviously the, 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 the shop thing that kind of showed off uh, Jimmy's more I don't play by the rules nature of his. And his dad was just a bumbling, like just a very gullible man. And, and then obviously the final episode, or the I think it was the last episode of the episode before that, where it was the, the their mother's death flashback. That was the very beginning. I can't even remember. Last episode. Last episode, yes. Yeah. So that was probably the most evident one, where you, you can tell that Chuck has this resounding like resentment oh, yeah, so, for Jimmy. That was so in that, because their mother woke up and said Jimmy's name two and, times. Two times and now and Jimmy will never know that because Chuck didn't tell Those him. were her final words before she died and then he he lies when Jimmy's like, "Oh jeez." That must have made him absolutely furious cuz he was sitting there. He's like, "No, it's Chuck. I'm here by your side." And she's like, "Jimmy?" 
It's like that must have infuriated him beyond belief. I do like what the show does, though, with the with uh, Chuck and Jimmy being like two sides of a coin in the way that Chuck do- does everything right. Like he's by the book and he does everything the way he wants to, but yet he isn't. He doesn't have the charisma that Jimmy has. Jimmy right. does everything he, like the slippery way. He never. He doesn't really play by the rules. But yeah, everyone loves him. Yeah, and I mean, you, and think, of, always, it, think of it in the show. That off because Chuck is always furiated because he does everything right, but Jimmy's always the one that gets the praise and the attention, and he can never have that. Yeah, and so you do get that quite a lot. I really, I think that's probably one of my favorite parts of this entire show: the conflict between the two brothers because they're both like similar in, in different ways, but just, but it's just the fact that Chuck, uh, they, but they're of their the things that they're different. They're the, that they do differently are basically the, the main conflict of the entire show, and that's something I do think that uh, the showrunners, good old Vince Gilligan and uh, uh, Peter Gould, Gould, uh, we still can't pronounce his surname, yeah. should definitely get some props for it because it's, it's one of the bigger, and obviously it culminates again in the one of the final episodes where they have that conversation. They have several conversations. Chuck kind of goes off the books though for the first time with the tape recorder, which is you know the big thing at the end of the season, the final scene where he records him confessing to the thing that he suspected all along. Yeah, he, like, I, I viewed it more as like he's finally stooped down to Jimmy's level where he's doing like a deceitful method of getting his own way because he realized that he couldn't do it his way, his by the book. I'm just going to try and look for the evidence and, and ask uh, you know the Lance guy who was at the 24-hour place. I'm going to try and do it you know, by the books the way I've learned the entire time in my law career. And once that didn't work, he was like, well, I'm just going to go, and I'm going to fight fire with fire here. And, I, I, and yeah, I've got to I respect him for that, because that was just, it was a really smart move, I think, to finally have Did him Did you think he level. died at the end of episode nine? No, no way. <laughs> There's no way they're going to kill him like that in such, a, in such a weird fashion. He hits his head off a desk. R.I.P. It was funny because some YouTube videos were like, Breaking Bad episode nine, season two, Chuck dies. I'm like, wait a minute. Chuck's <laughs> Yeah, I was like, wait oh, a minute, because this was before the season finale aired. I'm like, well, let's not jump the gun. There's still one more episode. Yeah. So, so I do you think that the Jimmy stuff, I think the Jimmy stuff, like, if we're trying to think critically, the first half of the Jimmy stuff wasn't too interesting, in my opinion. I wasn't too, I was more interested on the on the Mike side, for sure, than the Jimmy side, because I thought the whole HHM thing was a, getting a bit long in the tooth, where, okay, we get it, Jimmy doesn't really like working there, Okay, like I feel like it went a, a, an episode too long, I suppose, until he finally branched out with uh, Kim. Um, Although the um, one scene, which is one of my favorites of the entire season, I know you're gonna say, I think he's trying to get fired That's from. That's like yeah. my favorite sequence. He's, oh my god, he's the tr- amount of shit that he was. He's doing. trying to get fired from that company that Kim set him up with, and he's doing all this ridiculous shit, like playing loud instruments. He's like, "Oh yeah, I didn't fly." And like the guys Flying like those ridiculous. Suits and walking around. That's where you finally get the origins for the uh, salsas. Meeting and he just looked like a clown. (laughs) And then they're like, "Oh, who didn't flush the toilet?" I'm like, "Oh, we gotta save water." It's like, but we have low flush. And the guy's like, "I didn't want to know, Jimmy. You don't have to say." (laughs) And then he just fires him because he's like, "You know, I can't fire you for any other reasons." But he's like, "You won't get your bonus if I fire you for something." He's like, "But you will get your bonus if I fire you for being an asshole." (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, that was great. Um, that was, and then, so I guess we can get into the Mike stuff because that's like a separate plot line in time. Yeah, it's pretty much like two halves now. Because, on the show. yeah, he's getting involved with the freaking fucking, cartel now. F- fucking Nacho, really? Because I mean, it's Nacho's fault because Nacho's like, I have a problem with Tuco, and then he sets up Mike to do the whole dirty deed, like getting trying to get Tuco arrested. It works, and then you know, Big Boss Hector Salamanca with without the bell this time, pre bell comes in ding, ding, ding. and basically says, yo, get him out of jail, you cover up. And he basically starts to threaten him. Yo, I... He I, sends the two those, tw- the two henchmen to follow his family, and that really scares him. Those psycho, those psycho bald guys? Yeah, yeah and pisses him off. And that, that's when he, like, confronts him directly. He's like, I'm going to either kill you or you're going to, like, send your henchmen away. Yeah. Yeah, that was fucking... Yeah, but I think that even though Mike was shaken up about that, I think he got really pissed. He's like, you, you don't, you know, you don't threaten my family like that. That's why with the whole thing with Hector, he didn't let it go. Even Nacho's like, yo, Hector forgot about you. Stop, you know, trying to disrupt him. And Mike's like, he hasn't forgotten about me. And I was like, yeah, because he's, he's got a grudge against him. Like, he's not going to let him. Like, he almost tried to kill him. 
If Nacho hadn't been standing in the way, he would have fucking blasted his brains out with that sniper in that last episode. Yeah. I do think that, like, uh, in terms for the Mike side, two scenes that really stood out was obviously Tuko's one scene wonder, where him and Mike get into that altercation, and Tuko just starts, like, punching him, pretty much. That entire scene was great. Like, between him and... Oh, and nice Breaking Bad throwback, by the way. Question for the two of you. Who was the guy that was uh, that Tuko was, you know, giving the, the lie detector to... Uh, oh, before Mike know. came into the taco restaurant, that that kid, that guy that walks in and he's like grilling him. Yeah, well, yeah, the, no, yeah, the guy that's the guy that's sitting down like it's all there to go, and that's just like shush, shut up, right? And then he just lets him walk out. He's only in the scene. He's only in the scene for like a minute, and then he leaves. No, I know but, what you're talking about, but I don't know what he what he is in Breaking Bad. He was the the the, the cartel member that Walter White chokes in the in the basement in season one huh. with the bike chain. Or the bike lock, whatever oh, it's called. Um, Remember him? Crazy Eight. Yeah, Crazy Eight. That was the name. Yeah, that was that was Crazy Eight in That's that scene. Crazy Eight. Yeah, I didn't that was a recognize that. Cool back. I know. Um, and then yeah, that was that was probably one of my favorite scenes. And the second favorite scene has got to be when Mike's in his house uh, late at night, and he knows that um, two of the cartel members are trying to like you know send him a message or whatever. Oh yeah. yeah and he yeah, purposely and like. TV. And like walks to the side of the door and lets them walk out, and then just beats them up. Yeah. He's like, you're gonna have to send I... more than two guys to kill me. <laughs> oh, it was great. So yeah. I, I think the Mike stuff was thoroughly entertaining, like for the entire season, oh, like from the first said, episode to the last. We also forgot to mention the whole, like the whole beginning, which they didn't, they haven't really talked about it at all. But that stupid idiot, my baseball cards. I just my, want my oh baseball. Oh my god, <laughs> Jack and I. We just say that's like rank. the quote it's of like, the season. My baseball. I really I just, just need my, my baseball. Because cards. in that episode, like that guy didn't even show up for the rest of the season. In that episode, I was like, all right, oh this, my. this guy is lying. I was like, there's no way. I was like, obviously he had drugs. There's no baseball cards. Next episode, there's actually fucking baseball cards that yeah. he lost. I'm oh. like, are you kidding me? Yeah, and, and he gets fucking so he gets fucking Mike to negotiate with Tuco to get his stupid baseball cards back. Otherwise, he's gonna go to the police, which he idiotically ends up doing. And Mike has to save his ass from being. Basically, like, the police were going to throw him in jail because they knew what was going on. Oh, and that whole, and whole sequence with Saul, Saul and Mike where oh, Saul he, tells... He does him, something really embarrassing. He the, sits on pie. Like a, he's a, a, a pie, like a pie <laughs> painter? Yeah. The pie painter. Like, he takes videos of him sitting on pies or something. Yeah. Like, some weird-ass fucking And then shit. they walk out and he's like, are we all set? He's like, yeah, but you're going to have to make a video. So he had to make a video of him moving around in a fucking pie. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. gosh. That was great. That was a great... Con they always they had a couple of scenes where Mike and Saul converged. The second was when he takes up Hector's deal where he lies to the cops about what happened with Tuco. And then that other yeah. scene. So, Because, <laughs> like, Jimmy's yeah. now, like, Mike's go-to lawyer. He's like, oh, I need a lawyer to do something shady? All right, this guy. <laughs> yeah, at least I had fully established the connection between the two of them. Because in the first season, you were like, okay, he's a tall, buff guy, and right. Saul's the lawyer inside. How are they going to get to know each other? And then... It was through the natural stuff, I think, that they, they kind of got to know each other and all that. And this time around, they really need to have scenes to really establish that. But, um, yeah, so Mike's stuff really does start to pick up once he gets involved with the cartel and Hector Salamanca. And, of course, in the final episode, Hector tries to... Uh, Hector. Mike tries to kill Hector with a sniper that, he, that was kind of foreshadowed earlier in the season. Uh, but a few things didn't exactly go to plan in that, uh, uh, in that scene, pretty much. I mean, we still don't know who snuck around and placed that stick in his car. I think it was Nacho, because Nacho knew Nacho he was... Nacho was there the whole time. How would he have done that? I have to... I mean, it has to be him, because they had that whole conversation about, oh, don't kill him, don't kill him, he's forgotten about you, don't kill him. So Unless, I mean... I don't know if he had, like, one of his henchmen do it, but, like, I don't understand, like, how... Because Nacho walked into that house, and then, like... What? Well, here, here's the big thing, though, in regards to that theory. Um, a lot, like I, whenever I first watched that scene, I was like, yeah, it's definitely Nacho, because why would he be standing in front of Hector if he knew, you know, like, if he didn't already know that Mike was up there? But notice how, like, the car horn didn't go off until, like, they had all pretty much entered the, the, build, the, the building. So who, so someone must have been at the car at the same time that Nacho was heading into the building. That's what the I, mean. thing. I don't think it was. So it, it's not Nacho. Well, the big theory is that this might be the potential introduction to how Mike gets involved with uh, 
Gustavo Fring. With Gus. They think that it's one of Gus's henchmen that did that. Yeah. Um, and a big theory going on right, right now. Because didn't mentioned... the episode spell out Gus's name? Yes. Yeah, um, if you, if you, uh, the first letter of every episode of this season spells out F-R-I-N-G-S-B-A-C-K. Fring's back. That's what, that's what so it spells. So maybe he'll be in season back. three. So maybe that's what they were that's assuming. That's what they're thinking so. though. Because I mean, they, they have work. to, they work. have to meet up eventually. Because we know they do. Yeah, and it would make sense because Gus. I think, Gus the, I think the culmination of Mike and Gus meeting up will be Hector being put in a wheelchair. Yeah, maybe they team up to like uh, try to kill him, and it doesn't go as planned. And it maybe like it hurts him, and maybe paralyzes him, and turns him into a paraplegic like he is in the series. I'm assuming that. So. Yeah. But we don't know. I would this. think that I would think that Gus had his big plan and he saw that Mike was trying to like ruin his plan basically by killing Hector prematurely. And so he decided, all right, I've got to stop this and bring this guy into my group and then basically just employ him as one of my henchmen instead. Yeah, no, I can see that definitely happening. But um so what do you think will happen now, I guess, with this whole tape recording thing? Like, who's Ch who's Chuck going to bring that to? Because he's already lost his case, though. Like, do you really think Mesa Verde would go back even if he has the evidence? Like, like I don't think it's any more about that. I think it's more about now just, like, getting whatever he wants from his brother. Because he could, like, just arrest him at this point. Because he could submit that as evidence for, yeah, he, you know, his he brother. Yeah, evidence of Jimmy doing something that's illegal. The, the only problem is... Is that Kim is going to be tied up in the middle of this, so she, it's it has the potential to destroy her career as well. And the thing yeah. is, Kim knows though. When they get in the car after she, that after, was great. Oh, that was a great scene when she defends him. Yeah. Remember when she? Yeah, you do expect it as well. No, I, I thought she. Was, yeah, and then she just out of out of nowhere, she's just like, actually, Chuck, you're an asshole for blaming your brother. Yep, but then they get in the car and she starts punching him, and I'm like, oh, she knows, and she just doesn't, she, like, she knows that he did it for him, but she knows how wrong it is, so she's conflicted. She's like, yes, I got them, but it was in a dirty way, so I think that's why she just punched him and just didn't say anything, she just drives, she just didn't want to talk about it, she's like, fine, I'll let it slide. But that's why, of course she knows, because at the end of the episode, she's the one who says, oh, make sure you covered up all your loose ends, and then that's when he runs out to the printing shop to buy off that guy. So, yeah. But, yeah, so... Okay, so, yeah, so what's he going to do with the tape? Well, there's a few things that he could do, I think. Um, obviously, the felony thing's one thing. He, he could blackmail him at this point. Like, we, we don't know how far Chuck's going to go down this rabbit hole at this point. Yeah. Because this could, this could be, like, the whole... Because you, know, you know that Chuck's name is basically all he has. Right. He's worked up to get his name. He's got his name on his own flipping business. So he might, like, bribe Jimmy and be like, hey, I don't like the way you do your lawyer thing. You've got to, like, chain... If you... If you're gonna still be a lawyer, I don't want to be associated with you anymore. Change your name, you know. Yeah, change I'm, where I'm you're sure working all that. This could sure be the this start. Is leading up to the the house, Saul Goldman is born. I'm pretty sure that's where this is leading to. Yeah, but, but again, he quit? is he gonna stay? Is he gonna stay retired from? A no, he said to Jimmy to to tell Hamlin. No, he's not gonna retire. So we know that he's gonna keep lawyering. I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that was the whole thing, though, that got him to go there in the first place and freaking tape his house and all that shit and yeah. all that other crap. He made his tinfoil palace. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His Faraday cage. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess those were all the scenes pretty much. I know season three will probably have the same ten episodes next spring, but, um, yeah, I don't know what to... Uh, expect really i mean i think we discussed a lot of it fring coming into the picture more uh conflict between the cartel um you know how, you cl how close do you think we are to the actual breaking bad timeline at this point i think they could go another one or two seasons yeah maybe one or two more seasons perhaps because yeah once we see fring that's probably when it's going to start to pick up i think that the fring stuff is going to start aligning with the whole uh jimmy turning into Saul yeah. kind of business and then they'll match each other again I mean, I imagine by the end of season three, we'll see that developed. And then if they, they might want to do one more season to kind of like fully flesh everything out. But I think by the end of season three, they'll be, we'll have Saul Goodman, we'll have Gustavus, and we'll have Mike working as a hitman. Also, are we getting any more scenes in the present? Like, they start every season with a scene that's in the present. So Yeah, but they, they seem pretty irrelevant. Though. Like, the first... 
Oh my Someone's god, that, that first one was hilarious. Like, he gets the press, lost in this fucking dumpster room for like hours and hours and hours. Yeah, and uh, well, that's that's the one that's for season two. Yeah, the first one. The one in season one is him working at the Cinnabon shop and then watching old tapes and reminiscing. But yeah, when he's yeah. locked, he's when he's locked in that basement, you see like an edging of Heisenberg behind him. When in after he writes his name, you see it above. So that was a nice like reference yeah. to that. I wonder if Walter White will be in this at all. It's just like a cameo. I don't want to. Obviously, I don't know if that you know would steal the show for people or something. But I think if if the season if the series goes like a good four seasons or whatever, I I don't think a, a Walter White cameo would be too bad. Then if it, if it happened like season one, that would definitely steal the spotlight. I think, I think that would be the ending point though. Also, I mean, well, if if they do, they they might end up bringing back Jesse like earlier because he was a no just bring the entire cast back. Because he was a, he was a he was a known drug you know although he was you know not very good at it <laughs> he was a he was an amateur drug dealer. Apparently, Aaron Paul really wants to be in this show though. He's expressed interest. In I can it, see so. him being in like a season four if they do that. But mm-hmm. yeah, so is Brian Cranston though. Brian Cranston said if he ever was offered the opportunity to play Walter White again, he'd definitely take it. I would I would like to see like a modern Jesse though. Like I would like to see if they jumped into the present and showed like. Something with them. I don't know how they'd be able to do it, but I think I'd probably prefer that over another flashback. Like, hey, look, it's Jesse from 2008 kind of thing. Yeah, true. How, how long do you think they're going to go with this series? Or this, uh, I show, feel like or... they would go four or five. I mean, unlo- when, when, the sto- when they feel like the story has reached its conclusion or when it go it runs the four or five season course that Breaking Bad has. You know, it depends. It depend- it, it'll probably be just when they've told enough story. No one AMC, they will probably be like, we'll have it going for 10 seasons. and no. <laughs> I, don't know if like they would retain, I don't know if they retain viewership that way. They'd have to have some pretty, you know, big curveballs thrown at they us. They need some more cliffhangers. No, AMC needs to stop with the fucking cliffhangers, honestly. <laughs> I saw a funny uh, thing below on the internet where it was like, uh, the final episode should have ended with like uh, with a camera. Whenever Mike was aiming at Hector, the camera should have just... Um, just panned with the sniper, and then like you get, you didn't get to see uh, Mike shot <laughs> in the end, and then it's a cliffhanger. Oh, yeah, he the, shoots the someone, season. or no? It goes, just shoots. It goes first person perspective down to the thing, and then he <laughs> yeah, and he sees someone fall back. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But then, hey, that would not, be so bad because you know where everyone's like standing, so it wouldn't be that bad. <laughs> oh well. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Oh, I don't know, season three could be pretty exciting, pretty explosive. And if we see a lot of Fring, that'd be especially good. But I think he's gonna be—he's probably gonna be another to go where he's gonna show up. They seem to bring back one, one new character every time, like at least one. Like Hector was a big one this season. The, the the two crazy twins were as well. You got a little bit of a crazy eight cameo. So you've got, you've got some people jumping in. So I feel like every season you get someone new, and obviously the writers know that people like that. So. We'll probably get more, and they'll intersect with the story. So, um, yeah. So I guess that's mostly it. Mostly it. If I don't know, I score the season. How do, I don't know. How do you think this one was the season one? I guess. Um, it's hard to say. I'm trying to remember season one. Like I can't. Like I'm not. I'm confused because I don't. I can't. Not because I can't. Uh, not because I don't know my feelings, but because I just can't remember what happened. Season, season one season was one. were those were that that dysfunctional family that hid in the woods and oh, tried so to I, protect their yeah, money. Right. Yeah, that um, was a really good episode though. With when Mike came and like stole the shit. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they did a very good job developing it. I really like this show. It's a very mature, well written, well acted show. Yeah, I would. I'd say it's around the same. I can't really think of. I can't really think of any pros or cons better than the season one. So I'll say they're roughly the same. I've been satisfied with both uh, series of the show. Yeah, I was generally Point. satisfied with both of them as well. So it was. It was good. It was a good, you know, re- relaxing show after you know, inten- you know, intense violence action on Sundays with The Walking Dead. And then you just transition to Monday. It's like, all right, we're gonna get some development, but you know. Not gonna, you know, blow me away. Or not, like Game of Thrones starting, you're gonna get more violent, <laughs> actually oh, sexual. Yeah. We're just gonna go to the opposite stuff. end of the spectrum now. I mean, there's no, I hold, no hold back. So, so I guess on that end, we'll be signing off. And um, I guess for these type of reviews, we'll see you in a year's time. But I have other TV review kind of content coming out, obviously with Game of Thrones. But that'll be done differently than Walking Dead, as I mentioned in my update channel update. So, um, yep. That's uh that's it for this video. So until Saul Goodman is reborn, 
We'll see you guys later. Woot woot. Bye bye. Wait.